If you were the scapegoat in your dysfunctional family system, it feels like we were branded with a label on our foreheads because it just seems to follow us around everywhere we go. So today, let's talk about being scapegoated in the workplace and what we can do about it. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, I'm a certified coach. I specialize in abuse recovery from narcissistic, sociopathic, and psychopathic abuse. When you're the non-conformist, the truth teller, and the injustice fighting person who's against wrongful actions, society isn't gonna like us, especially in work situations. There are many possible ways and reasons as to why someone scapegoated in the workplace. So we're talking about five of the most common ways. One, scapegoats from toxic family systems also can sometimes be the yes person at work who takes on way more than they can handle because they often struggle with creating boundaries and have people pleasing tendencies. Higher ups and employers see this and abuse their power by forcing work onto scapegoats and also end up blaming the scapegoat for any mistake in the workplace due to them doing so much and no one else in the workplace wants to take accountability. The scapegoat in a toxic family system was always to blame. So the scapegoat from a toxic family system in the workplace may internally gaslight themselves into believing that they're at fault. They may vent to a coworker that they thought was safe and that coworker betrayed them and told all the other coworkers to avoid being scapegoated or for a higher place in the work environment socially or in their actual job. Or the scapegoat may be very triggered and react. That reaction just paints the scapegoat as bad or crazy in the workplace and that just solidifies how they're seen in the work environment. Two. Oversharing is a very common way people are scapegoated in the workplace. If a scapegoat shares anything about their horrible home life, any personal or relationship problem, or that they're estranged from their family system, that's gonna spread around the workplace quickly. People will judge the scapegoat, see them as immoral or not following social norms, or automatically see this as the scapegoat can also be the work scapegoat because that person the scapegoat confided in might just be their abuser in different skin. It can take months for a toxic person to show you who they truly are, especially if you're not living with them. They mask themselves so well, you won't know who they are until they decide to make their move and things that you've told them are going around and you only told them. Three, workplace scapegoating can happen when you file any form of complaint or give corrective criticism, even when there's a huge issue in the work environment, employers or higher ranked employees don't wanna hear it. If it's not affecting them and their wallet, they don't care about the people they have to step on to be successful when there is already a toxic work environment. Four, scapegoats often have brilliant ideas and you know what that means? You're a threat. Scapegoats are seen as competition even when they're not trying to compete with anyone and just contribute to their job. Toxic employers and employees will steal scapegoats' ideas and not credit the scapegoat because they want the credit and the success that follows those ideas. And finally, five. If the scapegoat takes up for anyone in the work environment when something wrong happens, get ready for the arrows because you just became the target. Simply caring about how others are treated, taking up for anyone struggling in any way, shape, or form puts the scapegoat in a situation where they will be labeled as difficult, overreactive, dramatic, or a problematic employee who just won't sweep things under the rug when things get hard. What to do when you are the work scapegoat? If you're the work scapegoat or need to avoid becoming the work scapegoat, here are seven things we should consider trying to make our lives easier in these hard situations. It's important to remember that any work environment that feels like high school all over again is going to be toxic and clearly chaotic. One, if there's a staff meeting, keep any and all opinions to yourself. We have to protect ourselves and criticism or ideas are not welcome in toxic environments. Two, avoid talking to anyone in power. They may say they want help. They want to make sure the workplace is safe for everyone, but realistically, it just gives them more work if anything does happen and they can make your life hell at work just because you added to their workload. Three, be careful making friends at work. When you're detected as the nonconformist, the truth teller, the fighter of injustice, you can easily become someone's scapegoat in the workplace because many people often hate their job 
or life and scapegoating is a coping mechanism they can use to avoid addressing their own issues. Four, be careful who you trust. It's important to talk to coworkers only about work, especially if you're new. The less they know about you, the better it will be for you until you know who they are. Let them show you if they are trustworthy. Trust is something that is earned. Five, don't join in with coworker work hate. If you tell coworkers you don't like your job, management, how it's structured, other coworkers, etc., it can be used against you whenever someone sees fit. Many work environments are cutthroat, and if other coworkers benefit by having you out of the workplace, they will do their best at being a snitch, even if they said the same things as you did or you just agreed with them. Six. Remember, you don't have to please everyone. You're allowed to have boundaries. Doing more work doesn't mean you'll get promoted. It often means you just do more without receiving any recognition or the pay you deserve. And finally, seven. When things have been extremely toxic and you feel like you can't function, it might be time for a new job. Many people recommend that you should just quit this job and then find another one. Well, if jobs were that easy to land, everyone would easily have one. It's unrealistic to just up and quit a job unless you have enough money to support yourself for months while looking for a job that would be so much better for you. But it's important to remember that you don't have to be stuck in this terrible situation, in this terrible job with these toxic people forever. Look for other jobs while you're in this horrible one whenever you can. And don't tell anyone that you're looking for another job. Secure the new job and then get yourself out of there. You are no one's doormat. Have you experienced workplace scapegoating? Let's talk about it down below in the comment section. We have to spread awareness about this hidden form of abuse that happens every day in the workplace. If you like content like this, please like, share, and subscribe. I will see you next time. Stay safe.